Apostle Paul, at the end of his last great missionary journey, returns to Jerusalem. He has escaped perils by land and sea. Now he has to face the bitter hatred of the leaders of the Jews, who declare that his teaching overthrows the law of Moses. On the advice of his friends, he agrees to take part in a ceremony of purification in the temple. Here he is recognized by some of his former enemies, who quickly succeed in inflaming the people to attack him. Men of Israel, help! This is the man that teaches all men everywhere against the people. Ah! In this place, and further, I've brought Greeks into the temple. Ah! <laughs> Not that Egyptian which made an uproar, led out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus in Cilicia, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. You may speak. Brethren! Fathers! Hear ye my defense. a Jew, born in Tarsus, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, taught according to the law, zealous towards God, as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this way unto the death, and went to Damascus to bring them that were there bound back to Jerusalem to be punished. And as I made my journey, and was come nigh unto Damascus, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. Rise and go into Damascus, and it shall be told thee the things which are appointed for thee to do. And I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that were with me. And one Ananias, a devout man, came and said unto me, Brother Saul, Receive thy sight. And I looked up upon him. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, 
Thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And when I was come again to Jerusalem, while I prayed in the temple, I saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. And I said, Lord, they know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believed on thee. And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by, consenting unto his death, and kept the raiment of them that slew him. And he said, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. Away! <laughs> so that we may know where for we cry so against him. Is it lawful to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned? Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Roman? Tell me, art thou a Roman? Yea. With a great son obtained I this freedom? But I was free born. Loose him from his bonds. On the morrow he shall be brought before the chief priests. Then will I know whereof he is accused of the Jews. Testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Have they not cause to hate this man even as we? Wherefore we shall hide nothing of that which you plan to do, but speak freely before them. Then when this Nazarene cometh down from Antonia, then we will set upon him. Lay in wait for him. And slay him. Slay him. Brethren, let each among you bind himself under a great curse, that neither shall he eat, nor shall he drink, until this man be slain. I thank thee for hastening to me with this news. Take this young man to the captain for he had something to say to him. All the prisoner called me to him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee, his sister's son, who hath something to say unto thee. What is that thou hast to tell me? The Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldst bring down Paul tomorrow into the council as though they would inquire further of him. But do not yield unto them, for there lie in wait for him more than forty men, which have bound themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now they are ready, waiting for a promise from thee. See thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things unto me. Make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea, and seventy horsemen, and two hundred spearmen at the third hour of the night and provide them beasts to set Paul on, to bring him safe unto Felix the governor. Claudius Lysias, unto the most excellent governor Felix, greeting. This man was taken of the Jews, and would have been killed by them. Then came I with an army and rescued him, having understood that he was a Roman. And when I would have known the cause wherefore they accused him, I brought him forth into their council, 
whom I perceive to be accused of questions of their law, but to have nothing laid to his charge worthy of death or of bonds. And when it was told me how the Jews laid wait for the man, I sent straightway to thee, and gave commandment to his accusers also to say before thee what they had against him. Farewell. Of what province is he? Of Cilicia, Excellency. I will hear thee when thine accusers are also come. Keep him in Herod's judgment hall. Most noble feeling. I pray thee that thou wouldst hear us of thy clemency a few words. For we have found this man a pestilent fellow, a mover of sedition among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also hath gone about to profane the temple. Whom we took. But the chief captain, Lysias, with great violence took him out of our hands commanding his accusers to come unto thee, by examining of whom thyself mayst take knowledge of all these things, whereof we accuse him. To tell us to speak for us all. Gladly do I answer for myself. Because thou mayst ascertain, it is not yet twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the city nor in the synagogue. Neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. My Lord. When Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I will know the uttermost of your matter. Keep Paul, let him have liberty, and forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. Many times he hath counseled men to forsake the law. Above all, he hath profaned the holy place. Neither against the law of the Jews, neither against the temple, nor yet against Caesar, have I offended in anything at all. Wilt thou go up to Jerusalem, and there be judged of these things before me? I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, where I ought to be judged. To the Jews I have done no wrong as thou very well knowest. For if I be an offender, and have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be nothing in the things whereof these accuse me, no man may give me unto them as a favor. I appeal unto Caesar. Thou hast appealed unto Caesar. Unto Caesar thou shalt go. Tell me of this man. He was left in bonds by Felix, against whom the Jews brought no accusation about such things as I supposed, but certain questions about their own religion, and the one Jesus, who was dead, and whom Paul affirmed to be alive. Being in doubt concerning this question, I asked him whether he would go up to Jerusalem and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul appealed to be reserved unto the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept until I could send him to Caesar. I would also hear the man myself. Tomorrow thou shalt hear him.
King Agrippa, and all here present with us. Ye see this man before whom all the Jews had dealt with me, crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found he had committed nothing worthy of death, and had himself appealed to Augustus, I determined to send him. But I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord. Wherefore I have brought him forth before you, and especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination I might find somewhat to write. For it seemeth to me unreasonable to send the prisoner and not signify the charges laid against him. Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee. Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions concerning the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth know all the Jews that after the straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes serving God day and night hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which also I did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison being exceedingly mad against them, persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I made my journey, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven shining round about me. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the goad. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness unto me, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Now I send thee to open their eyes, and turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but continue unto this day, saying none other things than the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. <laughs> Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning hath made thee mad. I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of these things before whom I speak freely. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were almost and altogether such as I am.
accept these bombs. This man doeth nothing worthy of death or bonds. Nothing. He might have been set at liberty had he not appealed unto Caesar. 